next part about drawing portraits is actually trying to draw a portrait that looks like the person it's supposed to represent. For this next part, I am looking at a photograph of our first grade teacher from our faculty page. So if you would like to choose a teacher to draw, you can look on the faculty page and select a teacher or faculty member from that page. If you would rather draw somebody from your family or draw a self-portrait, you can look at a picture of somebody from your family or at a picture or a mirror of you. Now that I am drawing a real person, I have to pay close attention to the way things really look. So this is different than my drawing exercise I did where I was just measuring out the proportions of the face. This time I'm actually comparing that knowledge that I have about facial proportion to what I'm really looking at. Because in the photo I'm looking at, our first grade teacher has a big smile on her face. So that is going to change a little bit about the way I draw the facial features. It's not going to be just a calm, resting face. And I need to think about that so that I can really capture what she looks like. Just like in our exercise, though, I am going to start with the eye socket. So it will look like a circle in the beginning. And I've already drawn out the head shape while looking at the photograph and marked out my guidelines while looking at the photograph to make sure that my general measurements are similar or the same as the actual real life person. Now in the photo that I'm looking at, our first grade teacher has a big smile and when you smile, if you look in the mirror at your face when you're smiling, it doesn't just change your mouth, it changes your cheeks, it changes the shape of your eyes a little bit because your bottom eyelid uh, squints up a little bit. So when I go to draw the eyelids, I want to really think about how they look in real life in the photograph. So not what I think it should be in my head, but what it really looks like. I'm using my observation skills to really understand how this should look. So I'm looking at this photograph and I'm looking at the way that her eyelid on the top goes over her eye and how much of the iris, that's the color part of the eye, is covered versus how much I can see. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. You want to really take your time. Notice I'm taking my time. I'm studying the photograph. I want to make sure that I have a good likeness of the person that I'm drawing. Now for a smiling face, the bottom eyelid changes a little bit. There's a little bit of a kind of squinting that happens in the corners of the eye. And the same thing happens when we're laughing. I don't know if you've ever noticed, but when you're laughing, the corners of your eye can squint up a little bit. And that's because the muscle in your cheek, this muscle here, when you smile, it pushes upward. And now that this isn't an exercise, that this is the real drawing, I'm going to add the little pink in the corners of the eye. Little tear ducts. Okay. And I'm looking at the shape of her nose. And I'm remembering what I already know about the underlying structure of the nose. That it has the three circles, but not everybody's three circles look the same shape. So I'm paying close attention in the photograph to the shape of her particular nose. Okay. Now, because she's smiling, I can see 
that the muscle has created a crease. Here she's smiling and a little bit of a, almost like a dimple on the side. So I'm looking at the photograph and I'm drawing what I see. I'm observing closely. And her smile is a big toothy smile. So teeth can be very tricky because if you draw every individual tooth, even though they're really truly there, uh, that's not how they look in real life. So our first grade teacher, she has a very thin upper lip when she smiles. There's her upper lip. And then it's a really big smile, so I'm going to draw just where the teeth are going to be. But I'm not going to draw in all the individual teeth. I'm going to save that as a detail. That when I add color or shading, I'm going to use the color or the shading to help me ident to help me point out the, the way the teeth look. Now, normally, it's a little bit hard for me to draw um, and keep my my paper straight. Normally, I would turn my my paper to get a better angle for drawing, but um, and and you can do that if it makes it easier for you to draw. I'm trying to keep it straight so that it's easier for you to see it in the video, but normally when I'm trying to draw something, I might turn my paper to the side to give it a little angle and make it easier for my hand to make that shape. Okay. Now because that she is smiling, her jaw is open, so it's a little bit lower than it would be if her mouth was closed. So it's a little lower than in the exercise video um, that I had posted already on, on the measurements of the face. So that's a little bit different. And then in the picture that I'm looking at, I can't see all of her ears, but I can see on the bottom, the bottom earlobe, she has some earrings. So I'm going to draw just what I see, the bottom earlobe and part of the ear. And I'm still using my knowledge that I have, that I've already learned about measurement for where the ear is. And then I can see a little bit more of this ear. Our first grade teacher has very light eyebrows. Before I put the eyebrows in though, I'm going to use my eraser and I'm going to start erasing some of my guidelines because I don't need them anymore. They've already helped me to place my facial features and now I can erase them because I don't need them anymore. They did what they were supposed to do. They gave me my help and now I don't need them all over the face. So she has very light eyebrows and they're very, very close to her eyes, so I'm just going to draw them very lightly. Sometimes when I'm doing a portrait, if I know that I'm going to be finishing it with paint or, or with um, some other art material, I might not even use the pencil to draw the eyebrows because I might just wait and, and do them with the paint. But for this one, I will do it with the pencil. There's her eyebrows and her hairstyle. Um, she has her hair parted, but not in the middle. It's a little bit off to the side. So right about here, this is our hairline, remember? So right about here. And there's a little space where it's parted. And then it's going down a little bit across her forehead. And then it seems to be tucked over near her ear and then it goes around because it looks like she's got it over one shoulder so this is the shoulder that it's not over and that's kind of the shape of her hairstyle and then I'm going to erase the 
guideline that I had for where the head was. And that's basically how her hair, she's got a few loose strands that are just wispy little strands of hair. side there's a lot more hair because it's mostly on this side and it goes up but then it goes down over her forehead so it goes across her forehead kind of like that and then it tucks over behind the ear I'm looking really closely at the real thing at the, the photograph um, and if you're drawing a family member yourself and you're drawing from life or from a, a mirror, and you really have the real thing, you can look really, really close. Because sometimes even in a photograph, it's hard to see the details. But when you have the person right in front of you, you can absolutely see all of the details. head was. I don't need it anymore. And that's why it's really helpful to draw lightly so that it's easier to erase. And then on this side is where we have all of her long and beautiful hair and it's flowing down over her shoulder, coming out from behind her ear. And then it's in shadow in part over here, so I can't really see very much about what's happening over there because it's a shadow. But where I can see it, I can draw the direction that the hair is flowing. In this photograph, our first grade teacher is wearing what looks like a scarf around her neck. So a lot of her upper torso is covered by a very pretty scarf. And the scarf does have patterns on it, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ignore the patterns just because they're really, really tricky. And they don't really tell me anything about the person, it's just there as a design. But I do want to look at where the folds are so that I can tell that it's a scarf draped across. And even though her scarf is draped across over here, I can still see her shirt. She has a blue shirt, so I can see part of her shirt and the scarf is there. And then it goes up and it wraps around this side of her neck as well and comes back down. Looks like it's a very long and flowing scarf, not like a winter scarf, just like a scarf that you would wear kind of for fun. And then I can erase some of the lines because it's not a see-through scarf. I don't want to see her shoulder. So that would be if I wanted to do just a very quick pencil sketch of our first grade teacher. And I'm going to save this sketch because I'm actually going to show you in another video how to add the color and the shadow uh, to a portrait. So I'm going to stop this video so that you can work on drawing your portrait. And then I'm going to add another video on how to color.